Hi, what a strange place. Where am I? You are in Portugal. What century, please? The 12th century, 1180. Welcome. It's an important moment in the history of Portugal. Really? What's happening? Our king, Don Jose Henriques, at the Battle of Salve, against his brother in 1128. And so in 1139, he assumed the title of King of Portugal. Really? Yes. In 1143, the King of Flying signed the Treaty of Zamora and recognized Portugal as an independent kingdom. But the Battle Pope, when did he officially recognize the independence of the Portuguese kingdom. Hoyle in 1179 through the papal bulls Manifesto Probata. So, your country was founded nine centuries ago. Amazing! Yes! Portugal traced its national origin to the 24th of June, 1128, the date of the Battle of Samomet. Afonso proclaimed himself Prince of Portugal after this battle and in 1139 he assumed the title of King of Portugal. In 1143 the Kingdom of Lens recognized him as King of Portugal by the Treaty of Zamora. In 1179 the people who manifested the writing of Pope Alexander the third officially recognized Afonso the first as king. Hello everyone! Hello! How are you? I'm a travel from the future. What century is it? It is 15th century. It's a great period of naval discoveries in our country. Cool! Can you tell me more? Sure! It all started in 1415 with the conquest of Ceuta in North Africa. Then, in 1419, João Gonçalo Jarco and Tristão Vaz found the archipelago of Madeira in the Atlantic Ocean. In 1427, Duke Silves found the islands of the Azores. I have heard about the Azores. It is where we can find the highest mountain in Portugal, right? Yes. In 1434, Julianos investigated the Azores. And in 1487, Bartolomeu Dias faced the Cape of Good Hope. Wow, this is so interesting. Portuguese people be true adventurers. Yes, we are. In 1498, uh, Vasco da Gama found the way, um, the maritime way, to India. And uh, finished in 1500, Pedro Alves Cabral uh, reached the, the coast of Brazil. Your country is so cool. The ocean is truly your domain. Yes, it is! 1415, naval exploration and the Portuguese Empire. During the 15th and the 16th centuries, Portugal became a leading European power that ranked with England, France and Spain in terms of economic, political and cultural influence. The beginnings of the Portuguese Empire can be traced to 25th July 1415 when the Portuguese Armada set sail for the rich Islamic trading center of Ceuta in North Africa. On 21st August 1415, Ceuta was conquered by Portugal and the Portuguese Empire was founded. In 1419, Rungo Salvezac is embarked on the island of Madeira. An inhabited Madeira was colonized by the Portuguese in 1420. Between 1427 and 1431, most of the Azores were discovered and these uninhabited islands were colonized by the Portuguese in 1445. In 1434, Chileans passed Cape Bouchardour, south of Morocco. In 1484, Portugal officially rejected Colombo's idea of reaching India from the west because it was seen as unfeasible. Thus began a long-lasting dispute that eventually resulted in the signing of the Treaty of Tordesillas with Castile in 1494. The treaty divided the largely undiscovered New World equally between the Portuguese and the Castilians. But Tullamadio led an expedition beyond the Cape of Good Old in 1487. Vasco da Gama sailed for India and arrived at Calicut 
on 20th May 1498. In the spring of 1500, David Wavell Cabral set sail southwest across the Atlantic and reached what will later be known as the Brazilian coast. Oh, what is this? Great, I'm in the 15th century. Let's see what is happening because I hear a lot of people scream. Hi, what's going on here? There's a revolt movement going on. I don't know much. If you want to, to know more, ask our leader. Who is he though? Our future king, Don Juan IV. Okay, thank you. Wait, are you Don Juan IV? Yes, I am. What is happening here? We are trying to get rid of the Spanish monarchy. We want Portugal to be independent. 60 years of occupation is enough. This or today? Yes, today, December the 1st, 1640. I am going to Balcão Passo for me to get crowned and declare a brand new era in the history of Portugal. On August the 4th, 1578, while fighting in Morocco, Young Portuguese king Sebastian died in the Battle of Alcacerquibir without an heir. Philip II of Spain claimed the Portuguese throne. Under the first two Spanish kings, Philip II and Philip III, Portugal maintained its status. Portuguese nobles were given excellent positions in the Spanish courts and Portugal maintained an independent law, currency and government. Later, however, Philip IV tried to make Portugal a Spanish province, and Portuguese nobles lost power. Because of this, the Duke of Braganza, one of the great native noble band and a descendant of the King Manuel I, was proclaimed King of Portugal as John IV on December I, 1640, and a war of independence against Spain was launched. Although Portugal had substantially attained its independence in 1640, the Spanish continu continued to try to reassert their control for the next 28 years, only recognizing the new Portuguese dynasty in 1668. Hi! Oh God, what's happened to Lisbon? There was a massive earthquake. When? On the 1st of December of the year of our Lord, 1755. The city room took a big hit. Indeed, after the earthquake, there was a tsunami that caused large-scale destruction. Many people lost their lives. Who had Lisbon rebuilt? It was Marquis of Pombal, who, with a group of engineers, uh, traced a new construction plan for the city of Lisbon. Disaster fell upon Portugal in the morning of the 1st November 1755, when Lisbon was struck by a violent earthquake with an estimated Richter scale magnitude of 9. The city was razed to the ground by the earthquake and the subsequent tsunami and fires. Despite the calamity, Lisbon suffered no epidemics and, within less, then one year was already being rebuilt. The new downtown of Lisbon was designed to resist subsequent earthquakes. Architectural models were built for tests and the effects of an earthquake were simulated by marching troops around the models. The buildings and big squares of the new downtown of Lisbon still remain as one of Lisbon's tourist attractions. They represent the world's first quake-proof buildings. What is happening here? There is a citizen's moment going on. South Braga is leading us. We want Portugal to become a republic. No more monarchy! No more monarchy! No more monarchy! Why is that? Being imposed an ultimatum by the British is too humiliating. The king must fall. Did it start today? Yes, today, 31st of January, 1891, here in Porto. What are you going to do? We are going to bomb the Royal Palace. Republicans forever. Kingdom Manuel is too friendly with the, the English. I'm sure he's going to flee to England. Traitor! 
The 5th of October 1910 revolution was the overthrow of the centuries-old Portuguese monarchy and its replacement by the first Portuguese republic. It was the result of a coup d'etat organized by the Portuguese Republican Party. Between 1910 and 1926 there were 45 governments. Many different forms were attempted, including single party, governments, coalitions and presidential executives, but none succeeded. However, the First Republic endowed 20th century Portugal with an enduring legacy. Under the civil law, the basis for an education revolution, the principle of separation between state and church, the overseas empire only brought to and hand in 1970s fight. And the strong symbolic cultural, including the national flag, the national anthem, and the naming of streets, defining to the present day the collective identity of the Portuguese. What's happening here? We are having a revolution that is pacific. Instead of bullets, we are using carnations. Indeed, that's why it's called the Carnation Revolution. This revolution will be a new era for Portugal. No more dictators. Now we are a democracy. Free at last! What day is today? It's the 25th of April 1974. The perfect day to celebrate freedom from now on. This is a great day for Portugal, it really is. The Carnation Revolution, also known as the 25th of April, was initially a 25th of April 1974 military coup in Lisbon, which overthrew the authoritarian regime. The revolution began as a coup organized by the Armed Forces Movement, composed of military officers who opposed the regime, but it was soon coupled with an unanticipated popular civil resistance campaign. The revolution led to the fall of the Estado Novo, terminated the Portuguese colonial war and started a revolutionary process that would result in a democratic Portugal. Its name arose from the fact that almost no shots were fired and Celeste Cain offered carnations to the soldiers when the population took to the streets to celebrate the end of the dictatorship. Other demonstrators followed suit and carnations were placed in the muzzles of guns and on the soldiers' uniforms. 